Hello, I'm George Hayes, and this is going to be an SDL tutorial on generating uh, basically an RPG type game. It's going to—it's the start of what I'm intending to make a series of, and what the series is not just going to be involved as far as inside a dungeon like this. Hoping to actually make it where there's an external grant uh, RPG world that's procedurally generated as well, and then the dungeons and all off that so each time you play it can either be new or you can actually have save games in it and stuff like that and anyway the idea is to create a series along the line of that and what we have right now is we have a procedurally generated dungeon to demonstrate the way the movement and all like that is as far as as you can see the character doesn't actually uh, move just the map is moving around the character and we haven't animated a character at this point and I'm not sure that we're going to and the idea is to get the primary you know set of the game working to where it's at least fun to play and stuff like that and maybe later on we'll add in animation and so forth as far as that animation as far as 2d in my opinion is kind of harder than animation when it comes to 3d because for every animation in 2d you have to sit there and do it for every direction so for example if you're going to have eight direct you know directions the character can move you know you have to uh, like for the different corners and then left right up and down you got eight different animations you got to draw out for that and then if you want to sit there and fix it where it's got different clothes and all like that and they can change out different parts you have to make those pieces individually and have them line up and everything correctly and so there's a bit of work that goes on there so we won't discuss that really anymore beyond this point the idea today is on this topic is we're going to look at how this movement is done and maybe a little bit of the, how the map is created all right uh, as you can see we're moving the character not actually we're moving the map all right and so when we push up on my arrow key what's going on is the maps moving down when I push down the maps moving up and so on and then there's like as far as going through doorways all we're looking at versus not being able to go through a wall uh, simply we're looking at the tile that's under the character to determine whether or not they can go there and granted you could look at more stuff than that you could look at like what objects you have on top of the tile or whether there's monsters there and so forth like that later on okay so I'm going to close out of that and we'll go ahead and jump into as far as what this is uh, basically it's a standard SDL library with images uploaded IO stream stuff and then map gen which is basically a class I created for just generating that random map alright and it's fairly simple it'll, you give it two values into it and it'll put out the map on it um, and it's a little bit of code here and we'll go through this towards the end because we're already at three minutes and 30 seconds so basically what we've done is create a set of tiles as far as in our map as far as what you see here is like um, the T map right and we're using tiles technically to sit there and look at that and let's see if I can find it right now here we are we're pulling our tiles as far as off of a single JPNG file like this and that's a floor the one type of wall another type of wall if we decide later another floor a doorway and then you know empty spaces zero so and obviously you got room for more but right now we're just loading the first eight into it and it's not really being used beyond that all right and most of it's actually just getting used from one two three two and four or something to that effect as far as what you see in it so what it's done is it procedurally generates the t space and then it goes on to sit there and create this tile map now we have a secondary map right 
which is what's actually in the viewing space that this S map and we keep track of the character position right and we compare it to this character's position is in comparison to the position on in the primary map right because the character position on the screen is always the same at the location here which is about tile 13 I believe we have it set as because it's 25 tiles sorry uh, 45 tiles across so it's about tile 22 or 23 here and then there's like 20 some tiles down 22 or something like that 28 I don't remember but um, and we can look at it later as we get down into that part of it so we also create one of these map generators that we got here which then and, and we also upload a character uh, texture we initially create the map tell it to create the map to 100 right and it sits there and gives us a start position now remember to offset the minus 22 and minus 13 is the position where we're gonna have the character sitting as far as on the screen so that's going to be about right there when it sits there and generates on init uh, same standard thing and we just sit there and create a window and so forth like that that's out of same as on all the rest of our projects so far as for on the tutorials so if you go watch the basic tutorials this is basically the same thing as far as in there all right so we load up colors which is that uh, tile texture and it was called colors originally because it was just colors in there then a character for you know which we put a wizard png in there type thing and then we sit there and create the clips for that tile texture and that's what's done in here and then we have as far as you know texture maps as far as that way that goes as far as here all right so when you okay so then anyway down this location here sorry about that uh, this location what it does is actually because the in the map generator here it's actually stored as far as the list as far as the tiles in it and ends up copying it out of that list alright here and into the t-map that is sitting right here for the texture map alright and then after that we can dispose of this if we choose to you know, or use it to run another map create another map either way um, so at this point we sit there it's got event handles as far as sort of up key error or down key error or left and right all right so it was, all that does is say the position is changed on it go on to on loop all right and so if we know if there's uh, if movements up down left right and the positions change that we need to make some changes so what we're doing is we're going to shift you know the characters position so that it's in comparison to the map all right and so if the characters position is to the left then we want to show you know that much portion of the left so you know it's tiles 100 so by 100 right now so if you were to take like your window and put there move it and right and your character moves to the left you'd be like moving your window over as far as in the view screen area that you can actually see so you'd only grab the tiles that move from that point over it'd be like one point for one additional tile leftwards to one tile less on the right hand side you know if you move up then you're going to reduce your tiles from the top and you're going to sit there and decrease the top increase the tiles from the bottom that you're going to do so you're going to move your position of your window what you can actually view out of that tile set and then you're going to grab just that so that's what this here actually does and any areas outside of the actual map area that end up in the view screens because you can walk all the way over with the character to the left we need to sit there and fill in with the black and so that's what happens here and so when it's outside of that positioning and stuff that's how that's filled in and then all we do is we come over here and we render it to the screen all right 
and it starts off up here and works across in a position like that so if we go ahead and run this real quick we can see some of this all right so here's the character right now and this would be the top leftmost tile which isn't the top leftmost tile of the map but it's just what's visible in this view screen area here all right and so when we move up like this what we did is we decreased our distance from the top right and we actually are drawing one additional row of tiles here all right and no longer drawing the extra row of tiles down here so we just copied it from the other map into the T map and that way we actually have it as far as we're there uh, since we are in the T map we didn't copy into the S map and the S maps what you actually see as far as for the screen all right that's what the actual view space is and I get you could lay I guess I could label it better and make it more clear for people on that regard but that's how that actually works so then let's see if I can get over to one of the edges real quick all right as you can see here on the left hand side this is actually outside the 100 area and we're moving all the way over to the far edge of the map and there's nothing there so we had to have a way to sit there and fill that in all this space in with you know blackness so it would just work like that and it's rather than it being filled in with garbage data all right so let me go ahead and jump back out of that and so that was what that other section was doing and then here we're just sitting there using this to determine which uh, clip we're sitting there placing into the uh, box as far as to sit there and do the with render copy to actually put to the screen all right so all we've done as far as over in this uh, section here is in this uh, S map and all you're gonna see values like 0 1 2 4 and so forth right which is going to be just an indication of which clip which you know in that clip resorts uh, tells you which you know portion of that image or which texture is going to be displayed you know so it's really a portion of a texture is being displayed here and that's what's going on and it's one thing nice about it is you only have to load up uh, one particular image to sit there and get you know all the different textures and you in this case uh, it's not too bad you can sit there and actually do fairly large images nowadays with PNG so you can have quite a few textures and save a lot of load time in that regard all right so but you can also still do multiple textures as well so that's all that's really doing as far as on that and then as far as cleanup it's just cleaning up the colors and characters and windows and stuff like that as far as on the textures and so forth and it's all fairly basic and simple map gen if you're interested and I'll spend a few minutes right now on it all right uh, function basically it has a start position where the character starts off at it uses a random determination where it, that room, first room is going to be as far as in the space that's given all right uh, the width and height of the map app and then you have a double array you know 2d array as far as your tiles and of course it's only gonna be filled like I said the zeros ones and stuff like that indicating wall floor door and so on all right so then as far as get tiles is how we retrieve the data back out of it you know we just run through the loop copy them out uh, get start X and start Y pretty simple and then as far as cleanup now how that actually generates the map if you're interested all right it starts off by drawing that first room with the four doors on it right and that's just manually input because it's the same every single time all right don't have to worry about that uh, the only thing that's not the same about it is the position of where it's going to be on the map and it's limited from about 10 out to about 80 so you got a ten, up and down so it's a gap on both sides of it all right now once you get past that issue as far as on there then it has the four doors and so forth on it and it starts the room gen right these room gen and goes through and will create 
the four random directions as far as distance, right? Zero to one off as far as that's closest to the door. That's on the door that it's being built at. So if it's being built from the left or north or east or south or west, that side's going to be zero, and the rest of them are going to be set as far as values. And it allows for more interesting room shapes and stuff like that to be created out of it. Then all it does is it sits there and draws the north wall, all right, then the south wall, all right. Let's see where we're at on this one. This this little portion here is just for fixing broken doors, but here's your room gen, all right, and it creates this different north distance, south distance, east distance, west distance, like I was saying, right. Then whichever one happens to be facing the, from the door you're coming out of gets zeroed, all right. And then here it draws your north wall, all right. Randomly places the door in it draws your south wall and randomly places its door in it east wall west wall alright and it only writes in the areas that do not already have something built in it also it sits there and makes sure that when it creates a door it doesn't do it create the door on the corner of the room that it's generating it doesn't create the do any doors in the uh, two blocks around the edge of the map and few issues like that so uh, then it draws the floors in as far as in for that room and has a list that takes the list of doors and then starts calling room gen for that each of those all right you know because as you're going through creating those doors you're putting them into a list and each time it sits there and create and then it calls back that list and sits there and recreates it um, it creates another room so it does a reiteration for every door it does so it branches out sort of like a tree if you think about it and goes around in different directions but uh, it finally ends when it can't create any more doors and so it just goes back through and stops at that point and which actually happens pretty quick because as you can see I can hit this button and it's done that fast and that's a 100 by 100 room all right and I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching you'll be able to download this actually off my website it's this is just a beginning and like I said codes not perfect on this here and there is some areas as far as in the map generator right now that you still will you know have a few spots you won't be able to get to and there's you know rooms that are closed off but it's not really one of those issues that's gonna hurt for what we're doing so Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Please you know, subscribe and uh, look for me to post up more stuff as far as on this. And we'll be trying to improve it and go on to build an entire game on this and some other stuff as well. Thank you very much.